Hi, I'm Jonathan Epstein from Redbird LED. Today I'm going to talk about how different manufacturers make different design choices in building LED tube lights. This is a typical LED tube light. This is one of the units that Redbird sells. It's designed to replace a standard four-foot fluorescent tube to give energy savings, low maintenance, and longer life. What I have here are cross sections from seven different manufacturers. And I'm just going to go down the list of them, highlighting the different design features each manufacturer made when they opted to go with this particular design for their product. I'll start with the cross section of the tube light that we sell, which I'm probably most familiar with. Basically, they use an aluminum extrusion that forms a D-shaped extrusion. It not only forms the back half, but it comes right across the center of the tube, providing a solid aluminum base for the printed circuit card, which holds the LEDs, to be mounted to. In this case, if I take the polycarbonate lens off so we can see better. The surface mount diodes that are used are reflow soldered onto the printed circuit board. The printed circuit board is in turn bonded to this aluminum with a thermally conductive adhesive the entire length of the tube. That's to ensure that any heat buildup that occurs in the diode is quickly wicked away and transferred to this outer aluminum shell, which also has small ribs on it to increase the surface area. And further, you'll notice the diameter of this shell is about an eighth of an inch bigger than the typical standard T8 tube, which makes it more massive aluminum. The more aluminum, the better heat sink. Going on to the next one on the list, and you see it kind of falls apart when I take it out. Um, once again, they use the surface mount diodes. They use an aluminum shell that comes all the way across the back, but they make an interesting design choice here in that the circuit card is mounted in two little ribs and it's separated by about a sixteenth of an inch air gap between the aluminum, thus making it very difficult for any heat to get out of that. Our third choice is, once again, very similar. It has a full aluminum half shell, but the circuit card isn't bonded at all. It's just floating in there. So you don't have the intimate thermal contact. This uses a larger scale uh, 5 millimeter surface mount diode, which is a choice some manufacturers choose to go. Any surface mount diode is a reasonably good solution for a lighting grade product. This fourth unit is particularly interesting in that somebody put a lot of effort into designing this heat sink. It's a relatively massive piece of aluminum extrusion. It's got fins, and if this were out in the air, where you could get convection currents around it, this would be a very good heat sink. What they then did is what really perplexes me, is they mount the unit completely inside a polycarbonate tube that wraps all the way around it, essentially suffocating the heat sink and not letting any of the ambient air convect around it to wick that heat away. Now we're getting into a different type of LED package. This is what's called the 5 millimeter dip. It's a 5 millimeter plastic package. It has a much smaller volume of phosphor inside, which is what generates the white light in a white light LED. And also, the thermal conductivity is really hindered because to get heat out of the chip, it has to go down these tiny little uh, electrical leads, which go through the circuit board, are then soldered on the back side, leaving these rough uh, protrusions, which makes it virtually impossible to bond that to an aluminum heat sink. In this case, they didn't even try. This whole thing is a complete polycarbonate tube. So you've got a bad design wrapped in an insulator. Then we get to a variation of that design. You've got another 5 millimeter dip package, and to look at it, you see the aluminum half shell and you're thinking, oh, this isn't so bad. But then, if you notice that aluminum does not come all the way across, and as I mentioned a minute ago, having these dips doesn't really lend itself to bonding it to that aluminum on the back side. So the printed circuit card is merely held in these two little channels. 
The only way you can get heat out of that card into that is through this very slight contact at the edges. And last, we have probably what I would classify as the worst design from a thermal management perspective. Five millimeter dip choice, but then they also made the decision to elevate these about an eighth of an inch above the PC card, making the thermal path even longer and more torturous. No aluminum at all in this thing. The PCB is mounted in a separate polycarbonate tube which is then slipped inside another polycarbonate tube. So you have two layers of plastic insulator holding whatever heat is generated inside there. So that's my short discussion of different design choices for LED tube lights. Um, I'm bringing this out because the main thing that relates to the longevity of an LED light is the quality of its thermal management. If you want to say you have a 50,000 hour light bulb and that it's going to output relatively the same amount of light at 50,000 hours as it did when it was brand new, you have to control the heat That's build out which the design choices are all about. I'm Jonathan Epstein from Redbird LED. If you want any more information, please check us out at our website. Thank you.